Welcome to the Musicians Creating Prosperity podcast, where you'll discover business, mindset, and leadership strategies to put your music business on autopilot. I'm your host, Dr. Fabiana Clore, pianist and former university professor turned seven-figure entrepreneur dedicated to empowering artists worldwide. Whether you're a seasoned musician or other creative entrepreneur, this podcast is your guide to financial, artistic, and lifestyle freedom. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Musicians Creating Prosperity podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Fabiana Clore. Today, we're talking about the autopilot, how you can revolutionize your music business model if you start thinking smarter instead of harder. Let's talk about how the autopilot model applies to the specific context of music. When you think about how most musicians have been conditioned to believe they can create their businesses, it usually centers around themselves. They need to be at a specific day, specific time as individual performers or as teachers or as producers delivering a service, whether you're creating music, most of the time the way musicians have worked forever has consisted of some sort of connection to their time. And the idea here, when you think about building a music business now on autopilot, is that you wanna be able to create a way where audiences, your clients, your community can access your experiences and yet still achieve personalization from you. I'm not talking about just creating something completely passive where you have complete disconnection and it's just like a series of pre-recorded videos and allowing people to access those. Although I believe there's certainly an opportunity for you to create something like that at some point. But if you're like most musicians working right now in a mode where you are trading your time, the best step is to take a step back and restructure your work to look at the opportunities for you to actually deliver your knowledge and share what you have learned in everything you've done in your life in a way that doesn't require you to being time bound or location bound. So there's a term called asynchronous instruction. And when you think about this, the idea is that if you can explore creatively, how could you get your students, your clients, whatever, whoever it is you're working with, how can you get them a result? And whether or not that involves meeting weekly on a one-on-one -on -one basis or on a group basis or creating you know, recorded videos going back and forth. How can you now create an asynchronous mode of teaching, mentoring, whatever you do, so that you can actually not only get better results, but also start documenting your knowledge. You see, one of the problems that I have found in the, in the traditional models that musicians use, specifically when it comes to teaching, is that it becomes very monotonous and repetitive. If you're like most musicians and you're listening to this, you're going to know that you have probably five to 10 core principles, core frameworks around the way you teach, the way you transfer your knowledge. And these things are basically the same that can be passed on to all of the people that you work with. They do not, they do not have to be exclusive to one student at a time. So for example, if you are a pianist and you teach piano, like I did for 20 years, you will probably have ways in which you like to help your students position their arms, position their fingers, sit up in the bench, positions in which you encourage them to adopt to have the right posture in their instrument. Or you may have a technique in which allows them to have more dexterity, increase their finger you know, ability to play faster or slower, or how to help them create more dynamic variations in the way they play. There are certain methodologies that you as a musician have developed to this day. And if you think about it, chances are working on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you're essentially repeating the same concept every single time with your students, multiple times, and it becomes monotonous and it becomes repetitive and it becomes wasteful. So for the longest time, this is how most music teachers have thought they needed to teach. And it's become the norm. But I want to bring you back to what happened in the 19th century. If you think about artists like Liszt, like Brahms, like Schubert, 
you have a lot of evidence that they thrived in a group setting where you could see beautiful artwork and, and paintings of Liszt sitting up in his piano with his long fingers, surrounded by all of his pupils uh, and really transferring specific principles and concepts and having his pupils take turns and playing for him, the traditional master glass format. And so when you think about that, all of a sudden, if you can now look at your model and say, how can I group my experiences and collect my students so that I don't have to repeat the same thing to each and every one of them on a weekly basis, but instead you can now little by little create a, an archive. You can create an archive of trainings that allows your students, no matter what levels they are, to come in and learn the foundations, the core principles that you know are true, no matter where your students are in their learning development. And how can you now create a way where they can access that on their own time and at the same time create a one-on-one -on -one modality where if they want to have access to you personalized, you can still do this in a masterclass setting, in a group masterclass setting so that you can actually encourage the community to learn from the collective knowledge and for your students to support each other in this process. One of the things that my clients have really shared when they share their experiences in presenting this type of autopilot model, so to speak, where they're not one-on-one -on -one anymore with their students, is that their students practice more, believe it or not. Their students show up ready to their sessions because they know they're gonna play in front of their peers. So now the pressure is, intrinsic and it's organic and it's a healthy competitive environment that raises everyone else's morale and work ethic. It's very different to have a student who just has a one-on-one -on -one teacher and can show up privately to the session and say, I'm sorry, I didn't practice this week. I had this, I had that. I was not paying attention. I was not able to focus. It's very different to have a student need to show up to a group setting and be unprepared. So I want you to start as you're listening to this episode, I want you to start envisioning as it relates to the model, there are many aspects of building autopilot systems in your business. We're going to start talking about the model, then we're going to pass on to other things. So as it relates to your teaching model, if you can now envision how you could start productizing your experiences. And when I say productizing, I mean, combining your knowledge, delivering trainings where you can record these materials little by little, by the way, I want to clarify that I don't advocate for building a lot of content, creating tons and tons of videos uh, and handouts ahead of time before you even sell this type of new model. You want to make sure that you create enough of an outline of a skeleton of your model so that you can present it to your potential clients, gauge the interest. And based on that, you continue refining it. And ultimately when they buy, your model, when they buy the, uh, the solution that you're able to provide, only then are you going to go into full production mode. You do not need to spend time doing all of that ahead of time, because unfortunately you're going to be doing things without critical information that your potential clients and your paying clients will give you. The last thing you want to do is put all of this effort and work and preparing so many materials and spending weeks and months creating content that you think is going to be monetized, that you think is going to be well received only to hear crickets at the end. Right? So I want to caution that and like put a little disclaimer that I'm not advocating for just creating everything ahead of time, but enough clarity, creating enough of an outline that allows you to be able to explain how you're going to teach this concept. Obviously you're going to be looking for a specific problem to solve, right? As any entrepreneur, if you're in business, that means you have a solution to a problem that exists. So it goes without saying that that's the starting point. You should be looking to solve a problem for your ideal clients. But now, instead of proposing a solution that is based on how many hours you're going to spend with them, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera, now you focus on really thinking about what is the result? What is that outcome, that transformation that you want to help your clients achieve? And how can you deliver that process, that methodology, without you needing to be the one in real time every day delivering that service. That's when this idea of autopilot comes into play. Because if you are savvy and you start using that same creativity that you have for creating music, for writing music, uh, for reinventing yourself as an artist, which we all do, if you can now start applying that creativity into reinventing your business model, 
and finding new avenues to get your clients not the same results you would in a one-on-one -on -one session, but actually better results. You see, one of the things we've seen uh, in, in, in seeing the application of this autopilot type model is that because you can create multiple touch points with your potential clients, you're not just seeing them once a week and then sending them off their way for them to have to figure it out on their own for the rest of the six days and then come back to you the next week, potentially have to start over again because they were not able to absorb the content or they were just not paying enough attention or they just forgot what you told them. When you have an online model that allows you to deliver real, real coaching in real time as needed as often as possible, your potential clients, your prospects have a lot more support. They can post questions. They can ask for support. They can send you videos back and forth, and you can allocate specific pockets of time in your week to create a batch response, right? To batch reply to your students and sit down and in a one thirty minute session, just send everyone direct laser coaching based on the specific requests for coaching, the specific requests for feedback. And so you can organize your time and guide your students on your time. And so I think this is a very important thing to think about because now you, you don't have a limit. You can work with students on your own time, whether they live in Hong Kong or in Korea or in India. Um, you know, we've seen this applied with musicians all around the world, really. And when you are able to see the model and say, how can I deliver these results without needing to be face to face with my students, with my clients and start reinventing the way you get them there and actually expediting their journey. Because again, when they have more touch points with you, chances are they'll get results in a better way. They'll be able to reach their goals faster, even if they're not necessarily right in front of you or in a one-to-one -one zoom session. Okay. This is the first part of this episode, but I also want you to realize that in order for you to convey the value of this new type of model, in order for you to inspire buy-in from your clients, from your students, from your potential clients, you need to believe in it yourself. You cannot get people to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. So although I can tell you all the strategies and the nuances on how to design this, and there's many other things obviously to keep in mind, it's not a one size fits all cookie cutter approach, but in addition to the potential formats and, and modalities for you to deliver this autopilot model, it's so important that you reflect on your inner position towards this change. If you're like most music teachers, chances are the old model of just being directly in front of your students, working on a, you know, weekly basis, one-on-one -on -one, is all you've done your entire life. And I get it. I used to be one too. I used to teach one-on-one -on -one lessons all my life. That's the only way I knew how to teach. And in fact, there was a misconception that if you grouped students, you needed to charge less because you were in a way giving them less value. And when you're talking about in-person experiences where you don't see them anymore in between the sessions, potentially that could be justifiable, maybe. But when you're grouping students now in an online way where you're leveraging many different touch points for them to be able to access your knowledge and continued attention, that actually raises the value of what you're offering. That elevates the positioning of your offer and gives you even more opportunities to raise your prices, raise your rates, and, and just work in a way where you don't need hundreds and hundreds of students to reach your goals. You can work with the dedicated ones that are willing to come and value this modality of learning. And it may not be for everyone, and that's okay. But certainly since 2020, the world has become a lot more open to online instruction and specifically online education in music. So it's totally possible. Musicians are doing this. I can think of an example, Aaron Brophy, who went through the Musicians Profit Umbrella system and restructured her teaching studio, teaching 14 one-on-one -on -one students, 14 hours a week, on top of her full-time symphony job and made these tweaks, presented them to her students with conviction, with that confidence, with that clarity, and was able to shift the working hours from 14 hours to one hour a week. And in her new group Oboe Path program, 
she was able to consolidate her students and deliver incredible results by using applications, using technology, using obviously weekly group sessions. So she still met with her clients. They still had access to her in real time, but it was always in a leveraged way, right? So the idea here is that you can actually create extraordinary results, but also not need your time to be related to those results. And so when you think about, you know, people like Aaron, people like Raquel King, who was also very, very tired driving to many different schools. She's a vocal teacher. Classical King Classical is her, her company. And she was really overwhelmed and busy uh, and also a mother of five. So she has a lot on her plate. She was able to apply this process and restructure her program, present it to her students, even if they were in other environments, like in schools, et cetera, and rally them into this new model and get them excited about learning through this different mechanism, using platforms online, you know, great platforms to really consolidate. You can do this in any way that you want. There's platforms like teacher zone. There's platforms uh, that you could do it like school. There's S K O O L. There's platforms you can use circle, right? There's so many different online platforms that you could use to actually collect your students, you know, and, and gather them in this way, circle.so. There's many different platforms where you can just collect your knowledge, record your materials, and allow your students to access those while you're sleeping, while you're practicing, while you're spending time with your kids, and then answer them on your own time, right? And so our, this is something that is now completely accessible. Obviously, you can use social media. You can use a free Facebook group. I certainly started that way, you know, at the beginning. And that's something completely free that you could use any platform that you can just upload your, your materials and invite people in a closed container and let them access those materials and let them interact um, amongst each other. That's another amazing benefit of reinventing yourself and creating more of an autopilot based business. When you're able to build this type of autopilot based business, now you can build community, right? When you have community, people are driven they want to succeed. They want to inspire each other. And in fact, I have had musicians come in and go to the Musicians Profit Umbrella program and sometimes face a lot of setbacks because this process is one that requires challenge, it requires reinvention. It requires, it requires stepping out of your comfort zone. And so sometimes that feels difficult, but when you're surrounded by people who are making it happen every day and you're seeing it happen, just by osmosis, you get inspired and you realize if they can do it, why couldn't I, right? So today I'm sharing some case studies. I'm sharing some examples. Uh, we're talking about some of the nuances, not just from a strategy standpoint, but also from a mindset standpoint, the importance of how your inner beliefs in this are going to impact whether or not people buy into it. All of these things are going to influence your ability to put your music business on autopilot not only as it relates to the model of instruction, the delivery of your services, but also every other aspect of your business. Ultimately, for you to create a self-sustaining, self-led music business, there are going to be many areas of the business that you are going to need to create systems for, create procedures, and find ways in which you can duplicate yourself and not be the bottleneck of your business. So in today's episode, we're diving primarily into the curricular aspect from a teaching standpoint, from a program standpoint, but we will certainly continue this conversation in other episodes around the other areas in which you can create autopilot systems in your business. My goal is to empower you to build a business that will become a gift to your life. It will be the vehicle, the asset that will allow you to create the freedom that you want, that would allow you to live wherever you want, that will allow you to Invest in whatever experiences create memories for yourself and for your family as a result of having a business that runs itself in every aspect. So stay tuned, share this episode with anyone who you think could benefit. And I look forward to continuing this conversation. There's a lot to cover. This is just the beginning, but thank you for watching and let's prosper together. Music